Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Okay, we're here. You want to no, go ahead? You want, you want me to go? This yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Back. Hey, I'm Bruce Broussard, the IPO, one of the producers here at. Uh, is it one signal? Is that, is that what it is? I mean, I'm, I'm open always signal. In, geez, open signal. I mean, yeah, I mean, we still this, haven't gotten over I, that. I, have I, we? I haven't got. I won't get over it. The trust okay. me, right front with you. I mean, I'll just be right up front with you about this, people. Well, you, you, know, you can relax. Is it one thing? You, if you know, there is a signal station out in North Portland that's open. Open. Yeah, yeah it's open. In North Portland. <laughs> yeah, I mean that doesn't mean anything, but. But it was supposed uh, to be an Oregon Public Broadcast. Not. not no, Portland that's Community a Media. That's a different company. Yeah, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I must have interviewed we, in the wrong chat. We can't get it right <laughs> Port, this Port, time. Yeah. See, that's, that's, what, that's what's brought on this whole confusion stuff. Yeah. With all this other stuff, you don't know what's going on. Anyway, yeah. long and short of all, hey, folks, we've got quite a show here for you tonight. What is the big one? Probably one of the biggest area issues that's being talked about here in the Portland metropolitan area. And that is the fact that uh, the mayor, Mayor, mayor Ted Wheeler, uh, identified his chief of police. I said identified. And, and basically presented the fact that he selected someone for his chief of police. But there are some things about that piece. First off, the, the person has to be, uh, let's see, vetted, or if not that, uh, uh, background check. Are they still doing that? They, they, they background check, and uh, they can't, and, and uh, what's interesting about it, and they're doing it in Salem. The, the, the highway, is it the highway? Oregon State. Highway Police. Oregon, Oregon State, State Police, police yeah. are doing the background check. Well, normally, Portland police normally does that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, uh, and then we, we want to talk about it. We just want to just just lay it on the table and try to hopefully give you a little history in terms of how we got there. Remember now, when when the, in fact when Don and I were running for office, we were running for mayor aspect of it. He was the chief. He was my chief. I mean, we we had a team thing going aspect of it. Team, he has background in police work and good background police work. Besides the fact he's published a book and. And he sort of opened up folks' eyes in terms of what uh, what police work was all about yeah. during his his venture. So that's why he's here. It's very very important. And Natural Teresa is here because because she also too, as a result of editing and getting involved in this whole process, she brings a lot of resources to the table also too. And that was why I, I sort of made that selection process aspect of it because it, because police has always been a major issue uh, within the country for that matter. Mm -hmm. And, we, and since we are focusing on Portland, Oregon, an Oregon aspect of it, I thought it was very, very important to just, hey, uh, uh, make sure that that was part of the platform, which right. we did. And Mayor Wheeler, who had not had any background, if you will, mm -hmm. in police work, sure, he's run for office in several different areas. And too often, that's normally what happens with a lot of times with folks who are running for office. They really don't have that background yeah. on, on another thing. But that, again, uh, uh, but the fact of it is, is that he was a pretty popular guy. He's, he had served in two major major areas, one Multnomah County and one is Treasure, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's coming over here running for mayor. But when he was running for mayor, uh, he was not considered to be a, a, a uh, what am I saying, so a, a likable person, if you will, a knowledgeable person from the Portland Police Department mm -hmm. because they did not endorse him mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the time. They endorsed, if you will, this young man from he was, on a, he, was a, he was a county commissioner, and they endorsed him. And I'm, I'm still wondering, what was his background in police work? Whereas, on the other hand, we had background. Well, I, I don't have any background in police work. No, 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 I'm talking about Don and Don. I. <laughs> yeah, Don, Don had background, and not naturally as a former jar here. Mm -hmm. It, it yeah. is a sort of a pair of yeah. metal, 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 metal. Yeah. But my point is that we tried to get the conversation, and I think we yeah. did a good job, Don. Yeah. You did a good job yeah. on that piece. But anyway, long and short of all, we've gone, uh, there's been all kinds of issues uh, talking about police here in the city of Portland. There's been protests. There's been all kinds of things, if you will. And uh, <coughs> there's the police union with their with their old Turner. And that's another issue aspect mm -hmm. of it. Uh, there's, the, there's been always the quote about who runs the city. Uh, Portland police runs the city. <laughs> and then at the same time, the mayor is supposed to be the commander in chief, if you will, yeah. of the police department. And then you got the chief of police, who's basically supposed to be the chief of police of the, of the troops. Yeah. That's right. It's a military right. kind of a deal aspect of it. But there's a certain amount of divide there between <laughs> The chief, when they, he works for the mayor, and the at the police union, so there's a little confusion there. So, but I'm just throwing some of this history stuff out. Mm -hmm. That's on the minds of a lot of folks, 
You got me? Yeah. But we, we still we still respect the police force. That's a tough job. That's a very tough, tough job. But you do need leadership. And the chain of command is kind of like a paramilitary para paramilitary group anyway. We, we all understand the, uh, the, the chain of command if we're military type routine. And the CEO, the, like I said, the chief, chief officer is the mayor. Mm -hmm. And then you got the chief of police who basically, he, that's the chief of police of the people on the, on the ground. But the, and the people, the people hired the mayor but through the vote aspect of it. So he represents the people. The problem is Ted Wheeler doesn't have any background in law enforcement. Well, that, 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 that's, that's true. <laughs> but, but again, like I said, he's still the mayor in yeah. terms of the process aspect of it. Yeah. So, so there's been sort of a divide. And so, so all of a sudden, uh, he was left behind, if you will, with the chief that was there when he got elected. Was it Markman? Markman? Uh, Marshman. Yeah. Marsh Mike Mark Marshman. Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Charlie Hale basically picked him before yeah. he left. So there was Ted, and then the police union identified with him. Yeah. And then th and there was a divide there, but, but, but Wheeler made a commitment when he ran for office that he was going to go outside and get a, get a police chief. Yeah. Basically what he was saying is, I'm going to get someone that's going to work for me and yeah. do as I'm told. Right. Do as they're told. Because there's a divide. So I'm, I'm, I'm throwing some, but please jump in and That's in, a big inject. divide. That's a big divide. And what I've read is Daryl Turner's not happy with the selection of Danielle uh, Outlaw because he wanted Marshman to stay, which I understand. You know, the problem is she's not from Portland. She doesn't know Portland's history. She's going to have to start reading some history books. Well, but at the same time, <laughs> in the same yeah, time. She's a when, long ways away. From but, but at the same time, from Florida. these chiefs are always being recruited all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're recruiting all kinds of people. That, and you were, you're right. I mean, you would think, but that's an administrative position. Yeah. See, and Don, hopefully Don can speak to that. The chief is not recognized as actually dealing with the troops as, as much as he should be in terms of... Don, what do you well, think about something? The police are administrators, but still they need to get down on the street and know what's going on. Exactly. That, what she needs to do is she needs to do nothing for three or four months just to see what's going on. And then after she feels comfortable with what's going on in the Bureau, then she needs to start making some changes. Right. Because the Police Bureau needs to be reorganized. Mm -hmm. You said uh, that. The problem, the problem with this person is not that she's not probably qualified and she has a proper master's degrees and all those things, but she's the problem crazy. is okay. she's not from here. Yeah, that's the main thing. That's the problem. So she yeah. has, she's not a native. She doesn't know who Bruce Broussard is. Yep. She doesn't know. know who Greg McKelvey is. She doesn't know who Don Dupay is. Right. She doesn't know who these Eraser, people yep. are. Yep. I'm nobody. And she doesn't know the mood <laughs> of the city. Yeah. Now, it's yeah. my understanding that she's not going to come on until right. October. Second. Right. So, so we're going to go along all summer long on an interim chief, and she's going to miss out on the entire long hot summer here in Portland, and she will take over in October when it's nice and cool. So everything that happened all summer will be somebody else's fault. And then in October she can start knowing the city, yeah. and that's what she needs to do. It, because she does, she's not from here. But at the How, same it, time. Be, it would be like me going to Oakland right, right. and trying to take over their police department right, right. Yeah. and knowing the mood of the city and who the players are, who the gangsters are, who the good guys are. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. That's just wrong. But then, but now then that Don, has nothing to do with being an administrator. I, I agree, but Don, See. at the same time, aren't policemen respected throughout the United States? No. Uh, and brothers Not and anymore. sisters? Not anymore. Okay, all right. I want, I want to throw that out. She is qualified, though, okay, and she's, she's a veteran. She's but, got 19 years as a police officer. Right. But at the same time, maybe some things could have been done early on, meaning that uh, maybe, and this is just some suggestion we're, we're talking, maybe the mayor might have suggested, if you will, once he picked her, say, well, look here, I'll tell you what we'll do. I've got an acting chief here. Why don't we, we bring him on as a deputy? Mm -hmm. Bring him on as a deputy chief. He was one that was a picked out and, and endorsed by the police union. So if yeah. he was there as a deputy chief, or better yet, even even not gonna happen. And, and even well, I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> if, if that if that had happened, or if not that, to get this divide thing about uh, the definition of who runs the city, maybe get another deputy. His name was Daryl Turner. Yeah. Make, no make 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 them the. the see now you got two deputy chiefs that has been that has been endorsed by the, the line troops. Mm -hmm. They know the city, right? Very much aware. She's an administrator. 
the, the, the well, mayor's here, and he basically there's order saying, look, this is what I want to do, and basically they are the two there, do your job. Because uh-huh. you know when you go to a base, you know when you go to another base, and you got a, a C, you, you got a CO that's been there for about three years, and all of a sudden he gets changed, and someone else come in here, trust me, you treat that person like he's been there forever. No. Ideally, Marshman yeah. is not. Uh, Marshman is not going to stick around and take second. F- well, I understand he resigned. Fifth. I understand he resigned. Yeah, he did uh, resign. And, and he should have. He's, he resigned. He's resigned. He's resigned. Yeah. So but why he, not? I mean, wait a minute. But for him, they stick minute. around. But, but he's a he's a she's a policeman be a and a woman yeah, yeah, and okay. a minority woman. I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, well, <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? We should give her a chance. There's nothing wrong with that. And the other if thing is, if she was from here, I'd be a lot happier. But it's, <laughs> but, but see, she didn't choose herself. Yeah. The mayor chose her yeah. because he wasn't getting the cooperation from the from the from the line troops. So guess what, Don? You do the well, same thing. I, I think I, that I bring, he I, chose her because he wanted a person of color and a woman. Because if he had chosen any of the other quali- the qualified applicants, and if they, you know, white men, the activists in town would have been screaming and yelling, "Another white man, another white." We want somebody, and that's a valid consideration, you know. Uh, I, I think that she she is qualified. I think we should definitely give her a chance. She's going to have to have a good relationship with Daryl Turner. H- how will for this, sure. How will this the police force? How are they going to react to her? They're well, gonna, because they're mostly white men, it's going to be. Who? I yeah, but Daryl's black. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Daryl Daryl's in charge. I mean, he is the guy that makes the decisions for the police department. Don. She's a newcomer. Don, I'm asking you a question. And she's going to need to be reorganized the police department. And if she doesn't, she's worthless. And if she does, they're going to hate her. Yeah, but right. the mayor was the right. one that appointed her. See, that's her, the I'm other wondering. thing. That's the other thing. Yeah. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Yeah, but 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 but, but everybody. <laughs> that's focused, the life of every. But cop. everybody's focusing on her. She was selected by the mayor of the city. Okay. Right. To save his butt. No, but but still, I'm saying, <laughs> let's not focus too much on. She was selected by Mayor Wheeler. And? Yeah. And you know, hey. I and now she's there. here. She's here. Now she's got problems. Well, but, but guess what, though? As I read in some of the background, some of the stuff that was out there on the news aspect of it, one of the things I, I saw, things like, for instance, she's going to live in Portland. Right, in the city now, limits. Some 70-some-odd 70 percent of those guys don't even live in the city. Why now, should they? Well, guess what? What about community policing, Don? <laughs> Everybody keeps talking about this community policing stuff. <laughs> I put the map of the city there. And well, I would say, okay, fine, you stay here, you this, 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 that, and this, if you want to work for us. It's mm. actually a good point. And you know what? She could live in the city and be perfectly safe because Portland, Oregon today in 2017 is a very different Portland, Oregon than it was in the 60s. Now, when Don was She's a cop in the 60s, cops safe. didn't live in Portland. They lived in Gresham because if, if it was anywhere in north or northeast, it was not safe. It mm. was crime-ridden. It was, it was run down. And that's one of the reasons he told me, you know, none of, none, he didn't live in the city and neither did his friends and partners. They all lived in either Gresham or Beaverton, right? Yeah, and that's, that's basically why Chief Moose didn't succeed in his plan to move back <laughs> into Portland. is because nobody but him wanted to move back into the ghetto. But it was all a good idea. All the policemen. That was a good idea. It was idea a good idea. Moose. It was yeah. naive. It was a good idea, but it's naive. <laughs> None of the policemen that are working that ghetto are going to move there, because number one, they're policemen. Everybody knows who they are, well, and you're going to endanger. There's no ghetto anymore. It's it was not then. A no, no, not, not now. It was then. Not now. Know, the property know. right now, buddy. It was then. middle class all the <laughs> right, way. Right. There's no. no such thing as a so ghetto. So she here. can she can live out in 162nd and stock and still be in the city. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, but then so Tom Potter tried it too. So, so former she, chief, did he? Yeah, former Chief Potter tried to do that. In fact, he came up with some monies, some grant monies, hmm. to, uh, if anybody wanted to come and move. Oh, yeah. But see, I but, remember that. But under our regime, Don, <laughs> we'll be given orders. As far as I'm concerned, I would say point blank, from this day forward, once we've gotten elected, if you will, uh, you're going to have to move in the city of Portland. Yeah. We want to use you as a community policing thing because it does make sense. If they were driving a car, would allow them to drive their car home, no. and then those people within that particular area no. would be feeling very safe. No. Well, okay. but the other consideration is that maybe Portland police officers don't want to live in the city of Portland. Because no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Certain wait, areas. Wait, 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 hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Hey, I'm paying you. Wait, right, what right. are you? What are you coming with this? I don't want to live. You, but, but you've got a job to do. <laughs> Yeah, give me a give me a However, they have they Richards. have rights. Rights. They, they can't have their Look, boss. Wait, 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 their wait, boss can't I'm tell them where the to live. Wait a minute. I'm paying the taxes 
a mayor is, I, I've elected this guy, even though I might not have, we ran against mm -hmm. him, but the bottom line is he's the mayor of the city of Portland. Right. I got to respect that, okay? Okay? Mm -hmm. But I want him to do a job. And I'm saying, hey, look, I think the idea of, of, of getting the guys to, to be a part of the city, mm -hmm. they're Portland policemen, and, yeah. and then you let them drive their cars home. No. I think it makes good sense, if you yeah, will. No, no. You know point? Well, no. people would feel safe if a guy is driving no, their car no, no, in the in the. No, no, when they no. when they be safe, well, you would. They're <laughs> they're bogging. You're a foreign policeman. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't have to worry. I know that. I know the neighbors in your neighborhood are safe. I know that. Teresa tells me it all the time. She says you don't have to worry about. It. She can go around the store, no problem. No, but the point of the matter is, I, I'm still going back to the her. same deal. He's the mayor of the city of Portland. He made yeah. a selection because he was having these issues. Yeah. He's he's trying to say, okay, fine. Okay, I right want now. things to change. Yeah. And he went and hired someone. Naturally, the, this is the whitest city in this in the right, country right, in the world. Right. The whitest city in Portland. So he figured, well, I'm gonna pick someone, a, a person of color. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of good. Now, I, I do. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and 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 in fact, before was it Bachman? I just keep forgetting the the, the, the chief. Oh, uh, Marshman. Marshman. Yeah. Marshman supposedly had been going out trying to recruit. Mm -hmm. More minorities and women. I mean, it's hopefully we'll, we'll get to a point where they're just saying, we just want to hire some good policemen and mm -hmm. this is the deal and keep on going and get people mm -hmm. of color all this. And they don't know how to recruit either. Yeah, they don't. I was a recruiter. <laughs> I know they didn't know how to recruit. Mm -hmm. I'm a recruiter. Mm -hmm. but, but the bottom line is that, but the, but the bottom line, I still go back to the same deal. She was picked by the mayor. Okay. okay. But now she's here. Now she's got a big job to do. No, 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 no. The mayor has a big job okay, of saying, no. "This is he's he's giving orders. This is what I want you to do." He doesn't know what to tell her to do. He oh. doesn't. Well, see, we, that's the problem. We didn't get into that. <laughs> that's the problem. We, we get but but you still <laughs> believe me. The mayor does not know how to reorganize the police department. Okay. He doesn't unless he's read my tome on it. But. But but the bottom line, yeah, did he get? Did you give him a book? No, no. He, didn't get, he didn't get a book. He, didn't no, get a he wrote an essay about his reorganize a five-year reorganization. I remember various, that. Various ideas. I remember that. He when had. he ran for sheriff, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, Don's got a lot of background. You yeah. got my point. He's very familiar. He should have called. In fact, we we talked about that. In fact, all the folks that ran. In all due respect, the mayor should have called him in, in, oh, in the office care. and chat about the issues I've, that I've they were. I've sent him three emails. He never responds. Okay, yeah, we're, we're nobodies. Yeah. Richard, <laughs> what do you say? We've been talking all this deal. What do you think about the, this deal? Oh, I'm. Uh, I don't know. I'm still wondering. I, I remember a time, a few years back. Yes. When one, I think it was a police chief. Uh, lived down in northeast, okay. close in, and these cowardly people. Go down there and try to make a fuss down there. It was Moose. Go it was Charles that Moose. Was Moose. Uh, Charles Moose. He was chief of police. A black guy. People. He was a black guy. Yeah. yeah. Going after responsible people uh, because you're a protester. I think that's just cowardly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's and by the way, I might add that uh, Moose was also one of the applicants. He was an applicant oh. for the job. He oh, came. Was he? Yeah, he was an applicant for the job. That's why he was in town. Yes, he was. Okay. An, he was an, well. He was an applicant for the job. He, oh, you know, wow. and, and he was there. I think it was number four or five or something like that. Wow. And, and they didn't select him. And you know, and, and then you got to think about the again the <laughs> politics of people. He would have been good. And, uh, but bottom line is this: like anything else, <laughs> sure. he has his definition and reputation. Mm -hmm. A lot of he's been here for a long time. He knows a lot about police. But a lot of the folks here didn't want him. Right. And oh. so he could not relate. <laughs> <laughs> to the mayor, because mm -hmm. the mayor said, "Look, I got a problem here. You got to run that that department, and I want these things to happen. And can you do it? And, and hey, yeah. at the end of the day, I can't do it." We heard that rumor, but we weren't sure. No, he was here. We he heard was here. that he, he was. was he he would he would have been a fine chief. In fact, that's one of the reasons why he left. There was another applicant. I don't know if he was in the panel, but uh, Mark DeLong would have been a really good chief. He's he, local. Yeah, he's. But he's a white man with blonde hair well, and blue eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is, that, but 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 he, but he gets yeah, along. Yeah. But evidently, does he get along with everybody? Yeah, oh, everybody, everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. Well, he's why? wonderful. Yeah. yeah, but again, he's retired from Portland and he's working in Gresham now. Well, he another, loves the job. There's another deputy chief. Again, I'm, I'm just trying to share. Yeah, I'm just sharing with the mayor. Well, but you know what? You know what? Because you know, he still has to make the call. When it comes to Mark DeLong, um, I don't know what Wheeler's decision about that was, but. There's, you know, there's a lot of classism in Portland. Oh yeah. And um, Mark, uh, Ted Wheeler is going to choose people like Danielle Outlaw because they have college degrees and master's degrees and things like that. And I understand that, but um, Mark DeLong would have been a really good chief. He knows the business inside and out. Well, hey, 
I will. I will give. No disrespect. I will give him this credit. He selected someone. Yeah. Good luck. He selected she has a someone. chance. I mean, we no, should, no. We he, definitely need he to give selected, her a chance. He selected her. Yeah. And I'm sure they've had some discussions. You got my point? Yeah. And he said, hey, these are the orders I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. And I'm here because at the end of the day, I'm, the, the buck is going to have to stop with me. Yeah. You got me? Well, and, yeah. And so that's a fact. Yeah. And then now when you start thinking about, quote, the, uh, the black community, Mm -hmm. That's another issue because she's got two sons, two teenage sons. Okay, but I'm just thinking so, about the black community yeah. in terms of whether or not they support support the selection that he made, mm -hmm. and whether or not they will embrace her. And well, you know, I was looking at Tressa Rayford's Instagram, and she seems to support it, but she's very guarded. You know, she says, "Let's wait and see." Basically, mm -hmm. that was the gist of what she said. You know, um, mm -hmm. because the bottom line is, she's still a policeman. Outlaw, outlaw is a police. She's a policeman. She's a policeman, and she's, she's a police person. And she's yeah. gonna, she's probably gonna, you know, be very supportive of the rank and file. Well, I so. think the key to her, in all due respect, right out the front, who's gonna be those deputy chiefs? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we need to who's find that out. Who's gonna be the deputy chiefs? Yeah. Her strength is going to rely on the deputy right. chief. She got to pick the right two or three. Right. And she yeah. got to get people that say, "Look, See, you do as I tell yeah. you." Yeah. yeah. Right. That's right. exactly yeah. right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That's definitely in her and, first and her job. Weakness, and her weakness. Her weakness, and it's a huge weakness, is she's not from here. Not that I even really care about well, that's that. That's what I'm saying. The deputy. But she's going to come to Portland, and she's not going to know any of the people here, and she's not going to know the rivalries, the histories. Oh, yes, yeah, she will. People. You know what? How's she going to do that? It's going to take a long time no, for her to get no, to know that. No, no, no. She's going to do it right here. We're going to have We're going to have it right here. Rich is going to be here. Don's going to be here. You're going to be here. <laughs> and I'm going to be here. And we're going to just educate people. And I'll this would be a good vehicle for I'm that. talking about the rank and file. I'm rank talking and files. The administrators, no. the sergeants, the lieutenants, the captains. She doesn't know She doesn't know the history of Portland Police Bureau. As Bud Clark would always say, read my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Next, <laughs> remember that yeah. he was a mayor. <laughs> right. He made it very clear who was chief, who, right. who was the who was the who mayor was of the yeah. city of Portland. He yeah. was. And, and, in <laughs> and in an indirect way, I'm I'm saying that Wheeler did the same thing. He could have been an easy guy this and visit. Time. He could have been an easy guy and, say, and gotten gotten what the the recommendation from mm -hmm. from the police to land right, right. He didn't do that. Right. He said, "Read my lips." But this is going to be the chief of police. You, now that's a job. <laughs> Yeah. It's a job. Yeah. I mean, imagine me, with all due respect, think about it. Imagine me, if, if through the election, I was elected mayor of the city of Portland. Imagine me. And then I bring Don along. Yeah. And then, <laughs> hey, Don is the, Don's making the decisions on anything that happens in the whole issue of police work. He's got the plan. He's got the layout. That's the way we're going to go. Well, what do you mean? He's just, hey. Read my lips. You don't like the idea? Find yourself another job. <laughs> you know, no, no, and, and you yeah. have to be that way. Right. I mean, they, these, are, these are men and women. And they, they, are, they are paramilitary. A lot of them didn't go through the military. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them did. Yeah. They're, they're Marines, they're Navy, they're, they're a number of folks. Out there. They understand the, the, the chain of command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have someone that understands the chain of command. And they will tell them that. Right. That's why that's why Potter was so so he was so he, he was a solid mayor when it mm -hmm. came to the chief. That's why well right, right up front with uh, uh, Potter was and then you had Bud Clark right you had Bud mm -hmm. Clark and you know you got Steele. You know my point is that even though there, there might be some likes and dislikes about these guys, but they but they were strong mayors. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't you, you do as I tell you. If you don't like to doing it, yeah. find yourself another job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you have to be assertive like that. Well, you got to be. be you got to the, be. Who uh, was the mayor during Occupy? Oh, Occupy? wasn't that? Tr uh, oh gosh, yeah. who was that? Uh, that was um, Park Blocks. That was four or five tenth. years ago. Was it? Tenth. Occupy the Occupy when when the parks were occupied. Park Blocks. Wasn't were that? Uh, wasn't that tenth. Charlie Hales? That was Hale. Oh, Hale. That was Hale. Yeah, that was Hale. That was Charlie Hale. Hale. Right, Don. Yeah. I don't know. I and that's when Cameron yeah. Witten got, got the big right, time. Right, right. He slept out there in the front of City Hall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, was he negotiating with the mayor at the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was Charlie Hale. Okay, well, yeah. but we that still police chief. We came here. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. So, you, so I think I think uh, we, it's not a big deal in many ways of saying, I "Don't do his big." You're right. We give her a chance, but no, it's the mayor made the decision. The mayor should be able to, in fact, I, I would like to invite the mayor to come here and just share his rationale. But right now, he's made the decision. Right. Now he knows. Yeah. But at the same time, she's really not chief yet. 
So no. when some start talking about getting this background check, you know what happened to the to the uh, superintendent of Portland Public School? <laughs> they selected him and oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Guy. And the next thing you know, they they say, "Whoa, gee whiz, you didn't tell us about that." Uh, the bounce I check when you're in college. Right. <laughs> yeah. The bounce I mean, check me, in college. In college. Exactly. Leave me alone. I don't know of any college student that didn't. <laughs> I don't anticipate any problems with her background check. Well, I, she's going to do... Well, she's knowing, gonna, knowing she's Will, too clean. She's well, knowing Willis' background as an accountant, so to speak, <laughs> with the numbers, he, he know for, for fact. But my point is that I, I, I'm just saying what I'm seeing, I'm just as a lay person, what I'm seeing that the police department did, said, no, we're not going to do it. Or mm -hmm. we, you know what I'm saying? Or they weren't going to do it fairly. Mm -hmm. You got me. So they, he went outside. Maybe, maybe called up uh, 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 Governor Brown mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, I may have an issue down here, and uh, I need to do a little background check, and I want to make sure that it's on the record, routine." And she said, "Oh, fine. Then you can use my state police." Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I think happened. Well, that's fine. I don't, there's no problem with having the state police and do the investigation. But don't you think though that uh, she's clean? I mean. I mean, why, why, why make a yeah. statement about the fact that now they're going to go through a background check? Give me a break. We just went through yeah. a situation with the school district. Yeah. No, she's clean. Yeah, because she Thank she's you. there's never been a whiff of controversy in Oakland about her, and she comes from a family of law enforcement officers. And I guess she was also um, she was uh, in high school. She was uh, what are they called? Um, Explorer Scout. Explorer Scout in high school. Wow. So this is like what she's wanted to do her whole life. Well, any, 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 any time a person gets that kind of a job, yeah. and we are still human beings. Mm -hmm. she, she's made some little frivolous kind of mistakes or whatever, but the fact of the matter, she went through that process, mm -hmm. and she's got that thing on the wall that says she's a, she can be a <laughs> chief yeah. of police. And he selected her. She was, a, she was a chief there. She was a deputy chief. Okay, but you made your point. We've got a new mayor. We've got a new chief of police. Now they're at the trail head. And if they don't do the right thing, it don't make no difference. What do you mean? Because if they, he doesn't know how to reorganize the police department. And if she doesn't reorganize the police department, then it doesn't make any difference whether she's black or white or woman or man. What about the mayor? The mayor is in the same situation. Well, so if he you? doesn't understand how to do it, so what do we right. do? the rank and file are not going to like her if she does the right thing, and they're not going to like her if they reorganize the police department. And what if the mayor says, look here, read my lips. That, that's She's going to be my chief. Okay, now, that's, that's, now you got a problem? You got a then problem. find yourself no. another job. The, the, the power of transfer. What transfer? The power of the transfer. Transfer? If you don't like the job, I'll transfer you to the waterfront. That's or I'll one. transfer you to the North Precinct. Right. Okay. Or I'll transfer you somewhere. Yeah. But my point is that he, yeah. he just, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm giving him a kudo on this one because yeah. he made a selection. Okay. See, I, okay. that's good. But that's all I'm saying. But we're that's still, good. if you don't do the right thing from now on, you're dead in the water. Well, they, they, the, they got a thing called recall. And, and the, what, what uh, they got the a thing called recall. The question is, what is the right thing? The question is, what is the right thing? This is the this is the focus of the of the Department of Justice. Too too uh, too many um, too much excessive force by police officers in Portland, and too many deaths involving mentally ill. So yeah. those are the focuses she's going to need to work on. Um, and that's going to involve some kind of retraining of Portland police officers. And they may be amenable to it, and they may not. Um, apparently in Salt Lake City, the Salt Lake City Police Department has adopted some um, de-escalation techniques, and they haven't had a, a, a death in two years. Yeah, but that's um, Salt Lake City. Those are much... We're, we're, we're Mormons. Mormons. They're we're Mormons. Mormons. No, they have yeah, just, no, they no, have no. problems. <laughs> that's that's, they not, have a, that's not a good analogy. They're Mormons. No, they have methamphetamine problems. They have crime, crime problems, just like Portland does. Yeah. But um, those are the so issues. The issues are police um, brutality, accusations of excessive force, and too many deaths of the mentally ill in Portland. So she's got her work cut out for her. One of the reasons we have excessive force right. complaints is because they don't use the chokehold. I know. They got a guy, they got to rustle him to the ground, beat him up, yeah. pig pile him. Gee, excessive force. Right. We didn't have that problem when I was yeah. a cop. Yeah. What did you do, Don? The chokehold. <laughs> the chokehold. The chokehold. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you got to stop. But you know, he, he didn't do the chokehold. came way hold. before the tasers <laughs> who kill people. Right. Chokeholds don't kill people <laughs> in that number. Don and didn't. Just, Don didn't do the chokehold no, with the arm around the throat. I didn't wrestle with people either. He, he didn't do the arm around the throat. He well, did he, the he, fingers he, um, in the throat like this. Well, the, and the, he didn't kill anyone. Nobody well, died. The, 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 the issue of Stevens, you know, the the Marine, the African American oh, yeah, Marine, yeah, yeah. when they, when they basically they, they, again, because he was an African American, right? You got me. The race issue got into the table, you know. So in regards to the chokehold aspect yeah. of it, 
So it, it wasn't given the opportunity Stevens. to really Stevens. His name was Stevens. Yeah, he was a Lloyd, he was a he was a Tony Marine. Tony, yeah, he was a Marine, and he was a security guard. And he walked in this he walked in this plaid pantry, and and uh, the, this particular guy was was doing some things, and, and to the manager, and and he tried to help him assist him. He, and then he, the police came to, in. Yeah, he, there was a shoplifter. Yeah, yeah. And, and the police came in, and and all due respect, they, you know, hey, uh, you got a black guy and you got a white guy, who's guilty? The black guy's guilty. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, that's all. Yeah, no, yeah. that's the way it was. Yeah, yeah. that's the way it was. Yeah. But someone should have put that on the table and had that discussion. Yeah. But, but the race thing was such that they kept that divide, yeah. and then it got into that tool, if you will, that Don is talking about, that didn't actually kill folks. Uh, and Penny Harrington uh, was the result of yeah, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, then Penny yeah. Harrington. Yeah. Well, Penny Harrington. Going Harrington. back a ways here. And, then, yeah, and yeah. she was on for less than a year and yeah. was fired because her husband was a drug dealer. Yeah. Well. So. I mean, it, not all yeah. kinds of things happen. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, but we're going into that with the Black and Blue Report. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. What you get it? The book. Yeah. <laughs> the book. You see what I'm saying? But no, uh, we're not trying to make any fun of this deal. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, and I, I'm still coming back to the same thing. That He's the mayor of the city of Portland. He got elected. Mm -hmm. It's done. He's, he's picked himself a chief of police. We need to welcome her here. Yeah. We need to all work together. Mm -hmm. You got my point. Okay. And in all due respect, I'm gonna put a little put a little bit more stuff on 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 Daryl. He ha he's an African American. She happens to be an African American. That's just yeah. another tool that yeah. he has. Yeah. I think he should embrace her. As far as yeah. I'm concerned, uh, you know, we said we said that we was running. As far as I'm concerned, I said, well, look. Uh, after we got through this this business, I said, "Hey, I, I even told Daryl, I said, why 'Once you apply for the chief of police,' I even, I even texted him. Yeah. They, they all should have a honeymoon time. Th that's, that's right. <laughs> when everything's perfect. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And then it blows up after yes, that. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because we got these other issues too that we're dealing with. We got we got young people that are out there on the streets. Yeah. And well, the, the the opportunity of having um, Danielle uh, Outlaw as chief of police is that she will be able to create effective change within the department. She'll be able to recruit more people of color, and um, the crime situation in Portland with, you know, gangs and, and just crime in general will hopefully be lessened, and hopefully she can address um, the excessive force complaints and also um, do some things to stop, do some things to help the mentally ill. You know, we've got this huge problem with mentally ill and heroin is so big in Portland right oh, now. Oh, that's all over the country. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's not, so big in that's Portland. That's huge, I hope yeah. it's a big, big time. You know, so you, you, you said something about her probably recruiting more more people of color, but yeah. in all due respect, you know, attrition, uh, uh, what's it, what's it, is it attrition, or what was it, it's, uh, what's, what's it, assimilation. Oh, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Well, well uh, Daryl has done a lot for that, mm -hmm. Daryl Turner, because he happens to be the union chief. You got, yeah. you got a lot of respect for Daryl, and he happens to be a person of color, and trust me, he has issues too, yeah. in, in, out in, even where he's living. A lot of times, it's some folks will challenge him and, and I do some racist thing about his stuff, about his yeah. family and stuff like that. But the point of the matter is, he, is, he, is, he has gotten respect, if you will, mm -hmm. from the lion troop. Sure. That's good. Now, if she will just come and set an example because of who she is and her mm -hmm. background, yeah. then that helps. But just, but just putting something in her face, and well, okay, you gotta go hire, like, for instance, uh, say maybe some more African American police. Well, you gotta hire more blacks. Or, uh, the well, Hispanic uh, folks are saying, yeah. uh, saying, well, look here, uh, we want sanctuary city, and we don't want none of this stuff. This is what you got to do. No, all she has to do is be a chief of police, and she's working for the mayor. Yeah, that's it. And the city of Portland. And the city of Portland. No, the, we're, we're the, the city people. of Portland. Right, the people. Yeah, the people. We're the people. Yeah. All we want is we, whether you voted for him or you didn't, the score is one nothing. He won. <laughs> so he is the mayor of the yeah. city of Portland. Yeah. So I think we need to slow down a little bit and let it happen for a minute. I mean, I had my issues with, with the guy. I mean, I've, I've talked See, about I, it. I, I'm more cynical about Ted Wheeler than you are. I think that he chose Danielle uh, Outlaw. Uh, primarily to save his own skin. I don't. I, hey. I, you know, I hey. really do. Yeah, but but guess what though? But guess what? He had to do something. Yeah. And did he? But he, he did it. If he didn't uh, resist Portland, uh, Portland, Portland resistance, and uh, and don't shoot Portland, we're gonna just continue to uh, chip away at him and you know harass him. And I really think a part of it was 
um, he's just he he's trying to save a, save his career. Well, he just got you know the whole the whole issue with the forty eight. That was the other thing, the forty eight hour deal. Yeah. I mean the forty eight yeah. hour deal. Oh, yeah. What I happened mean, with that? He pushed that. Guess what? Yeah. Well, the 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 the, uh, the DA threw that out. <laughs> but <laughs> guess what though? Guess what though? We paid a lot for that. Mm -hmm. The department got a raise. Mm -hmm. Now my point is that if you throw the forty eight hours, do I get my money back? Right. Right. <laughs> Taxpayers. It shows. It really, it really shows people in Portland how powerless they are. How they just really, the people of Portland really don't matter I'm when it comes afraid. to those kinds of decisions. It's I'm frustrating. Afraid. The forty-eight hour rule is a red herring. Mm -hmm. It has no meaning whatsoever. The only thing that the bureau can do is they can order me to appear here today. Right. They cannot order me to talk. So, what's the point of the forty-eight hour rule? Yeah. Any smart cop isn't going to talk. Oh. So 48-hour rule, yeah. who cares? Yeah. So it's a red herring. It's something mm -hmm. with, it's a negotiation tool that never made any, any, any difference in the first place, and doesn't make any difference now. I think one of the things, and I really, I really appreciate you, Don, for the time that we've been together. You've educated me real well, and in all due respect, I remember a guy named Smitty tried to get me on the force. Yeah. And I, I told him I couldn't. There's no way in the world I was going to do the Miranda rights. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm going to do a job on you. You're not going to spit on me. Yeah. So I couldn't. I, that was something I wasn't going to do. And, you know, with. that's an interesting point, the Miranda rights, because Don had been a cop for five years um, when they were created in 66. And yeah. before that, they never did. And I remember he was saying how when that change came around, all the cops were like, what? We have to read people their rights, yeah, and we yeah. have to carry this card around. And Yeah, Yeah, but my point is that we, we, need, <coughs> to, we need to really spend more time educating the public yeah. about what police work is. Because but the paperwork they normally have to fill out every time they do something this way. I mean, and there's a lot of other stuff. And then you, you know, you have to understand, when a person gets shot by someone, it, it really hits that person big time. There's a lot of stress. It's called, it's called PTSD, and they're finally understanding what that's all about. But it's not trying to be a goody-goody a guy about this stuff. At my age, fact, that's right there. Hey, look, I, I just want to be safe. I don't want no problems. Right. I pay my taxes. No, I, I have a I have a question that's really been bothering me. Good. After seeing so many problems of police pulling people over, right, and that is, what are you supposed to do with your hands? Mm. How do you stay out of trouble? Yep, yep. This keep, keep your hands visible okay, where the cops well. can see them. No oh, sudden okay. moves. Don't that's reach right. forward or because. I've seen some videos on YouTube. I mean, th these cops, they're out of state cops. They're not Portland cops, yeah, but yeah. the things they've done are insane. Oh, yes. Oh, you know, yes. Philandro oh, yes. Castro, I mean, uh, that, that situation was ridiculous. Listen, there was another listen. situation that happened. You know, sh oh. get me your ID. And the guy's reaching for his ID, yeah. and then he's like, hey, sh wait. And he shoots him. I mean, it's like, come on. You so, know? what do they do? What's the answer to that? Keep your hands in where, where the well, person can see But you're told yeah. to get your license. But see, that's the thing. <laughs> Those situations are less than 1%. Yeah. They're so rare. But they're the, they're the scenarios that we see on YouTube. And so a lot of people think all cops are doing that. They're not. 95% of cops are doing their job. They're doing a good yeah. job. And they're not shooting and killing people after they tell them, but let cops me see don't your snitch. ID. Co cops don't snitch on another. Right. That's the other problem that's in Generally, it. yeah. They just don't snitch. They do not. Yeah. Hey, look here. Uh, uh, you, you protect <laughs> my back, I'll protect right. your yep. back. Right. I mean, in all due respect, you know, we did it in the service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not the question, remember. The, the question is, what does a person do? The driver. I understand that. Okay. That's, that's why. I, that's why my we, license is in my pocket. Will you get it for me? Will you get it for me? Right. I have a gun in the in, in the console right here. I want you to know that. Actually, what you're supposed to do is, if you have a if you have a weapon and you have a permit to carry, you're supposed to um, put your hands on the um, the dashboard. Yeah, you're supposed to put them right there, and then you're supposed to say, "I have a I have a weapon in the car. I have a permit to carry. There is a weapon in the car." And you're really supposed to keep your hands yeah. there the whole until time. they tell you. To exit the vehicle, yeah. I can also say that a lot, I see these videos on YouTube, right? And most of them are training films on how not to do police work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, so they're yeah. not good examples yeah. of what uh, pull people over and shoot people. That's right. You know, and, and, and it's they're training films on how not to do police work. Yeah, and, and it's important to remember, people see those videos and people think this is what all cops do. Yeah. And, and that's not. That's not that's true. Not true. Because that's not true. You know, we, we have to remember that. And those are those are situations. They're less than one percent. And the reason wow. why we again I, I, again again why it's so confused. We don't teach it in the schools anymore. 
The kid today is far different than when we were going to school. And we were getting the training because we had career day. Right. We, we had police. The whole nine yards. They'd come in. They, 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 but the whole nine yard, okay? I mean, it was, it was kind yeah. of like something to be, if you will, mm -hmm. to be a cop, if you yeah. will, in many ways. Maybe that's what the schools should do. Yeah, but they're not doing teach, it. That's no, right. Teach people, do what the police officer says. And well, this is and this is the reason why. Right. Yeah. This is this is why you have to oh, do this. Man. This is not because the police say do it. <laughs> this is something that we signed off mm -hmm. through the process and yeah. said this is what they do when you stop a car and you ask for this. This is not something that they created. And so you got to make that clear. And then at the same time, the police need to know that if you if you if you if you're caught doing it something differently, guess what? You get busted. Or this something. is the thing. This is the thing about what you're saying. That's a really good point, Richard. Yeah. The thing is, there are a lot of videos and websites that offer information about how to conduct yourself after you've been pulled over by a police officer. But what we really need, we need billboards. Yep. Billboards near really? highways. Yeah. If Educate. you're pulled over by a police officer, keep yeah. your hands where they can see them. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be rude. Communicate. Don't be sarcastic. Don't be aggressive because police officers will interpret that aggression as a potential threat. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know? A lot of folks don't have We need billboards. Have we need billboards in Portland, you know? There, there are a lot of folks, uh, especially young folks, they may have smartphones, but yeah. they're not looking at no education films. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like you said, I like yeah. that. The, the yeah. visuals would be good. Put it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. The classroom. Yeah, Someone have teachers. In yeah. a uniform, yeah. uniform policeman coming yeah. into the classroom so folks know that you know it's not a scare attack but, you know, because there's some, some heavy stuff out there and then and they do that and the police officers do that and there know? could be problems at home that where they said well just stay away from police or do this right. or do that right. you know yeah. and you might have seen this too That's scared of I want to throw this right. out to you just to show you how uh, how we're going down the road of this stuff and and it's not helping our image here in the Portland area about the mm -hmm. i.e. the whitest city all that kind of good right. stuff the first post I saw in regards to her, in fact, Don, Don commented, mm -hmm. on it, but that first one was a musician guy and he called her a hoe. Oh, really? That's right. Yeah. He called her a hoe on Facebook. And, and then and, I started thinking and, about, yeah. I started thinking about, well, now wait a minute, Facebook should have caught that. Right. Because they catch other yeah. things and they, you know, they'll, if they don't like you, like, because they got folks looking at what you do, right, right. to a certain degree. But they, they called her a hoe. He said, hold something, blah, blah, blah. You check it out. Mm -hmm. I was going to pull it out there for the yeah. show. But see, you can't do that. Well, this, and that Shouldn't harkens that. back to the people in Portland, the vocal minority, the, um, the anarchists, those people in Portland who absolutely hate law enforcement, yeah. no matter what yeah. they do, no matter what their gender is, no matter what their color is. They hate law enforcement. They hate police officers. They are deluded and really believe that they're all corrupt. They're all stealing. They're all raping. They're all these these devils, you know, and it's ridiculous yep. because it's just not factual. And, and that, right, and that's bad for a person to believe that when they're in a car and they're being told to present their license or whatever it is that the police yeah. officer wants. Okay, okay. Yeah. So so we agree. We, we, just gonna, we got about 10 minutes, so now yeah. we've been talking a lot about <coughs> this, that, and the other, and, and I think that's, a, hopefully the, the folks are, will take this show. It'll be on, the, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we're oh. going to get that posted, and hopefully the the media, if you will, will get the show, and do something, due diligence, if you will, and do an honest due diligence and look at some of the things that we were talking about tonight, and go out, and go, go out and do, do you know interview some folks, if you will, because we're the public. All we want is safety and this, that, and the other. You got my point? Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So so hopefully, and the mayor, hopefully the mayor is understanding this. You know, Mayor, you know, you got to stick by your guns now. You're the mayor of the city of Portland, and you made a decision. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, hey, I'm, it's all you. The buck stops with you. I'm giving you that respect. Now, you're going to have to deal with it. You got to do with the protesters. And I would say, too, also, too, it, it, there were some things that were, that were happening in, in the, the initial committee, if you will, in the selection process. And um, uh, I would agree. They should have had some of the protesters on those committees. I don't know if they were on there. Did he, did he, did he, was any of those? They folks had on? some people from the community. They had a woman from the Lentz community um, and several other people, but um, none of the. Um, there was no one from um, Portland Resistance or from um, 
uh, don't shoot Portland, I don't believe. And they should have been it should have been an open transparency. Mm -hmm. You should have come down right here at yeah. table and just put yeah. the whole committee around and have the discussion. They should have had all the names of the people listed. Uh, no, I want yeah. the faces. I want to see yeah. the faces of the people yeah. having that discussion okay. about what they felt I about agree. the selection of a chief. I agree. You see what Paper me? can do that. He should have done that. Yeah. He should have done. He that. should have been more transparent. Yeah. I and agree. And in fact, in all due respect, and it's not too late. I think it's not too late. I think he should have that discussion with the Three chief, months. Mm -hmm. and he introduced to all the committee folks and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what we're doing, and then have them all raise their hand in terms of who who supports it. Right. I I agree because I I, I remember reading about that and I the last couple of weeks I've been like why aren't they sharing the names why is That's everything right. so secretive you know why aren't the people of Portland being uh, allowed to know what's going on why why the secrecy I resent that yeah That's I really, really do really sad no because the people who are who are demonstrating on the street that's the issue mm -hmm. I want someone that can communicate with those folks yeah you got me that's what I've been doing I mean that's what we do you know we do this mm -hmm. right on the digest and uh, but the bottom line if, if someone is commanding, uh, commanding, if you will, a group of people to demonstrate. I want to. I want to talk to that person. Give them the opportunity to express themselves, mm -hmm. whether you like them or not. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, when they're demonstrating downtown, it's taxpayers' dollars. They shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, the only way you're going to find out is to sit them at the table in a public venue and say, "Hey." Well, the other thing I, I would like to mention is that the, the reality is, um, you know, the Portland Police Bureau is always going to be here. Police departments oh, yeah. are always oh, going yeah. to exist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to have and, one. And I'm saying this in reference to um, Joanne Hardesty um, running for... Uh, oh, yeah. Running oh, yeah, for, yeah. Jo um, yeah, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. See, but she spent a lot of time in the... In well, the the police. She, the th I, we saw her a couple years ago at a race talks, and she was talking about how all yeah, police departments that. should be dismantled and replaced with citizen groups that would do police work. Right. And I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous that, I mean, I just have to bring that up. It's its ludicrous. And I, lo I, I lost tremendous respect for her because when she said those things, and she said it repeatedly on social media and um, at various race talks meetings, um, the fact is that's never gonna happen. No. That's never going to happen. We need to be realistic no, about no, about no. the world. You know, dismantling police departments, no, that's never no, going to happen. No, 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 no. She also doesn't understand about the 48-hour rule either. No. She's mis she's misinformed about that. You can't mm. make people talk. Right. Yeah. Unless you're considering waterboarding. <laughs> right. So well, in all due respect, Don. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you. In all due respect, you can't even make people talk if you're not a cop. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Let alone just, as long as that's well, part of the job. You, know, the, uh, you, got, you got to understand. You got to understand, yeah. when people do wrong, they don't sit up there and be nice to you, but yeah. tell you, this is why I did well, something wrong. Well, another thing is that when police officers are accused of any misconduct, they have the legal right to have confidentiality respected. They have right to privacy. And I think more people need to understand that police officers have the same rights as American citizens as anyone else. Someone working for a plumbing company or uh, you know General Electric or, or whatever, they have the same rights to privacy while those investigations are being conducted, and uh, you know that's just the way it well, is. Well, that's why the union exists. Let's be right up front with that's why the union exists. That's why this this thing comes up from the standpoint that the police is running the city. They basically say, hey, look at it. We got to do something to protect ourselves. I mean, I realize we have a. We have the five percenters on that, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's a that's a weeding out process, uh, exposure type deal. That's some things that we could do, if you will, uh, to maybe get those folks out. But that's mm -hmm. not an easy task, you know. Folks mm -hmm. get in, and they're just human, human like anybody else. They they have marital problems. They have right. kid problems. And and uh, and the other thing is that police work is the toughest job in the world, oh, and it is geez. utterly thankless. Geez. They're oh, yeah. damned if they do and they're damned oh, yeah. if they oh, don't. Yeah. And oh, yeah. so many of these young critics, they have valid complaints about racism, about excessive force, about the mentally ill dying too often. Oh, yeah. But most of them don't know police officers. And if they did, if they considered them as human beings and got to know them personally, they would yeah. learn to like them. They would, they would realize they bleed red blood like everyone. Well, you know? wouldn't it be interesting if you would ask any of the leaders or... Anybody who's in charge of this, that, and the other, say, well, I tell you what, tell you what, why don't you become a policeman? <laughs> right. 
I'll cut the red tape and I'll put a if uniform you on you. I'll put a uniform on you and I want you to come over here in this particular group over here and, and I want you just to police that group. If you want to <laughs> see a really good video on YouTube about a local Portland citizen taking a Citizens Academy class and tanking Jesse Sponberg. Oh, Jesse. Jesse Sponberg took this class <laughs> at, with some Portland Police Bureau trainer, trainee, trainers and it is really funny to watch it because he did everything wrong. And it really, and he's one of, he's been one of the biggest critics of Portland police, and yet he couldn't even do, he, he, they went through several scenarios, he did everything wrong, he was using excessive force, he was, you know, pulling his pretend gun too soon, he did everything wrong. That video, it's on YouTube, it's, it's an informative video because it shows <coughs> this Portland activist, and he's a great guy, he does a lot of good work, but it shows him tanking during this pretend class, the Citizens mm -hmm. Academy training, um, and, and basically just it illustrates how difficult it is to be mindful of what's going on and not overreact. Tough job. Yeah. And I... Well, he did, like I said, all due respect, <laughs> if I had my choice at the time, you know what I mean, we, we all, he ran for mayor. Yeah, I know. Imagine I know, if he I put know. a mayor hat on him. Mm -hmm. oh. It'd be like night and day, <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. My point <laughs> is that once you put that hat on, and you got know, that responsibility. Though. I mean, we, we've done that in the service. I mean, that's the whole idea. When you put a hat on a group of guys, and you know, when you pick yeah. them out for corporal or this, that, and the other, or first class, right. or they this, become that, the that, hat. It's a whole <laughs> different ball game, and as if to say, well, I didn't know he had in it, but guess what? <laughs> He's in charge, yeah. and I got to do the job. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I really don't think he would be mayor material because right. he's 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 got addiction but issues. But he has a right. No, he has a right. Right, but he's yeah, got yeah, he's yeah. got addiction issues, and he's a little too emotionally um, volatile. Yeah, but he, you know, so. he got a following. I mean, he uh, does. He has a following. If he got a following, maybe we might better get to him to tell him. So does Manson. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't compare him. We well, can't we gotta, compare we gotta, him to Manson. Gotta, well. He's a good guy. He does a lot of good things. But my oh, point yeah. was, this video of him on YouTube shows him yeah. tanking during the Citizens Academy training, and it really illustrates how difficult it is to um, to learn these skills. It's okay. it's called police science for a reason, okay. you okay. know? Well, we got we got two minutes left. As yeah. Let's just go around the table and give a last this commentary. Yeah, let let about them tell us what they're all about. Yeah, right. right. T t what, what do you think about the police deal? What do you think now? Me? I mean, uh, where, are we, where are we going now? I think that we need to give Danielle uh, Outlaw a chance, and um, she's got just like Daryl Turner said, she's got big shoes to fill. Right. Because I personally believe, I didn't like Mike Marshman, but he does have more experience than she does. Um, sure. But, you know, we need to give her a chance and hopefully it will go, hopefully things will work out well. Okay. So. Why Don't do these guys keep you know. leaving? Huh? Well, that's a bad, good, good point. Places. Why do they keep it, taking them off? It would be interesting if you had to talk with them. Trust good me. Pension. <laughs> Marriage is a pension. Well, that's right. Get another job. Don't we think? Good question. Well, I think she's... She's here, she needs to have a, a, an opportunity to do the right thing, but if she doesn't make changes in the police department, which are desperately needed, right. it's not gonna make any difference whether she's white or black or right. male or right. female. Right. If she okay. doesn't fix yeah. the problem, right. she's irrelevant. Right. I agree. My last little piece is that she needs to make sure she get her two top deputy chiefs right. okay. on the force. Right. I, I'd go back to Marshman right now mm -hmm. and say, Marshman, come no. on back here, buddy. Right. I want you to be number one, right. okay? And then I'll pick up this one. What's this other guy that was that was looked DeLong. at? DeLong. Mark DeLong. I'd get Mark DeLong and say, okay, fine, you're going to be number two deputy chief. <laughs> and then de now we're going to work. Well, these two guys have the most experience. They well, would be ideal they, 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 as support for her. And, and they're staff material. Right. right? right. Okay, we got okay. 30 seconds, and I want to make sure we appreciate the crew oh, that yes. has made Thank this you. show possible. Oh, yeah. yes. Really? One of them, I know, I got suspect on one of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he runs everything. You know. It's nice, nice it's to have a good professional crew. help. Yes. It, it is. They are. This, this, nice they're awesome. this is really uh, professional. They're awesome. And I try to follow instructions. I try to, I try to be quiet and not rattle the, the table. Well, again, yep. thanks, thanks very much.